There has been one scandal after another about several rogue clergymen's misconduct, which has led to widespread criticism in Thai society. Consequently, some Buddhists are losing faith. However, these scandals are nothing new. In fact, they've been happening for more than 2,500 years ever since the time of the Lord Buddha. But Buddhism has remained firmly established until now. There were many who were worldly beings and uh, were the reason that the Buddha laid down some training rules. For example, the group of six. And during those times, you know, the lay people would look down and criticize this behavior. So now I move on to the current age that we're in. This is the information age. This is the period that information is moved swiftly. We can call this consumerism, information consumerism. The person who is receiving this information, how do they process this? With all the coverage we consume, looking on the bright side is a good practice to take a look at our own mind to see if it's being affected by the three major types of defilements, greed, anger, and delusion. We need to look at our own mind if we feel critical. We need to look. Are, are our thoughts motivated by positive reasons or by negative reasons? There is also some fake news that I've known myself to be fake news, but you know, who are you going to tell? I mean, people, the consumers are, we don't know who they are and where they are, but they're, they're consuming this type of news. So I don't think we have one cure for this problem. And in the case of uh, misbehaving, I mean, we have it in every group, whether monk or uh, police or students or whoever, it doesn't matter, you know. And it only takes one bad apple to ruin the whole case, you know. So we need to keep that in mind. How should such teachings, which have lasted for over 2,500 years, reach the new generation in the era of information technology? New approaches are definitely needed. One of the core teachings of the Lord Buddha is that nothing stays the same, as everything is subjected to change. Buddhism, by and large, is facing a challenge to adapt to the modern world. Cartoons, there were never any cartoons before, but now we have cartoons, you know. And uh, I even remember the very first uh, cartoon uh, about the Buddha's history, you know. So this is reaching out to a, to a newer crowd of people, newer group of people, younger people, yeah. So we can do things like that, you know. But I don't think it should detract from the core teaching of the Buddha. It must always be there, because that's our stable, yeah. That's, that's our refuge, that's what we need to rely on. So all of our stress and suffering, there is a way to deal with that. But it's not by adapting the teaching to fit our needs. It's we need to adapt to, the, to what the teaching says. There are approximately 487 million Buddhists around the world, making it the world's fourth largest religion compared with 1.1 billion non-believers, including atheists and agnostics. There are more of these people than there are Hindus, the world's third largest religion. For the majority of non-believers, being a good person and doing good deeds should be enough. We ask Upaajan Kantasilo for his view on this. In the case of Buddhism, the term religion doesn't really apply to Buddhism because religion means a belief in God. Of course, the Buddha did not teach a personal God. The Buddha says we make our own destiny. We are good through our own means or we are bad through our own means. So to answer your question, you know, some people think, well, I'm a good person already. And that may be uh, over expectation through ignorance on their part. But there's other things that we need to, to develop 
because those people, as long as nothing comes to torment them, they're fine. But once they have suffering and stress, then, you know, they don't know what to do, right? So we, they can't say that they're fine already. So in this teaching, in the Dhamma, there is a way that we can help ourselves through the practice of meditation. So this is what benefit people can gain by taking up the practice. Morality, concentration, and wisdom. Morality develops concentration, and concentration develops wisdom. So this is why we have to explain the Dhamma. And you know, maybe we have to use different ways of explaining it, but the core message will be the same. On the subject of coming to terms with living in a highly conflicted society, he mentioned the four sublime abidings, which are loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity. Basically, it's a type of unconditional friendship. It doesn't matter what others think of us, friendly or not friendly. We spread positive thoughts toward them. These four sublime abidings are the perfect mindset for society because we're adding the positive. We're not adding the negative. We have enough negative already with the defilements. It's where, if you look in your own mind, you can see it. You know, it's there. Somebody mistreats an animal, then we want to mistreat the person, the mistreater, right? This is how the mind works, that is defiled. So this is the point of the Dharma, is to, we want to get rid of that. We don't want to be motivated by that. Then we have a mind that can be developed in a positive way.